okay so the next one is exercise 4 and this one is a little general we are given two positive integers a and b and of course an integer c for which we are considering this Diophantine equation ax minus by equal to c and it's given that a and b are relatively prime that is their greatest common divisor is 1 then we have to prove this equation has infinitely many solutions in which both the x and y values are positive that is infinitely many solutions in the positive integers and a hint is given and almost the entire solution is in fact contained in the hint so we are just going to follow the hint that's it keep in mind that here we are not trying to show that there are infinitely many solutions not actually just that that already follows from theory but we are trying to prove that there are infinitely many positive solutions in the sense that in each such solution both x and y are positive and this is how it has to be done so let's see what the hint says the hint first of all says that there exist integers x naught and y naught such that this is true then for any integer t which is larger than both of these rational numbers this equation x equal to x naught plus bt and y equal to minus of y naught minus a t actually give us solutions infinitely many solutions because for any such t exceeding both this and this the hint says that this is a solution there are infinitely many such t's so there will be infinitely many solutions but the point here is that these will be both positive integers so if we follow this hint we have to show two things first we have to justify the first line of the hint that there exist integers x naught and y naught for which this happens and then we have to show that this is a solution of course that is just simply a matter of putting these expressions in the equation and seeing whether you are getting t, uh, c or not that is a trivial matter but you have to show that these are uh, i mean these such sets of x and y involve positive integers okay so these are the two things we need to show so let's see how that can be done okay so it is given that a and b are relatively prime positive integers so let us start the solution like this since this is equal to 1 and it divides c of course whatever c is So that means the Diophantine equation ax plus by equal to c is solvable which just simply means that such integers x naught and y naught exist. So that is why we write there exist integers x naught and y naught. such that ax naught plus by naught is equal to c okay now let's continue like uh, we are uh, given in the hint now 
for any integer t satisfying t greater than this real number and t also greater than this real number we have okay so first of all let's just put these values in the original equation or rather these expressions in the original equation that is ax minus by equal to c and see uh, whether that is satisfied so we have a times x not plus bt minus by minus b times minus of y not minus a t so if we manipulate this expressions a little we get a x 0 plus a b t this minus and this minus will cancel out and we will be left with plus by0 minus bat so abt and minus bat they vanish and we are left with this which is c that comes from here so yes, these two values actually give us a solution and this happens for any t that is larger than these two. But still the fact that t satisfies these inequalities have not yet been used. Now they will be used to show that both x and y expressions here give us positive integers. And Okay, um, should I write x0 plus bt and then show that this is greater than 0 because of this or should I start from this and then show? Okay, let me just simply start from what is given and derive the fact that this is greater than 0. I think that is easier easier to see how that can be done so i start by considering the first inequality okay now we know something about absolute values of real numbers namely that the absolute value of a real number say let me call it or uh, let me give it some other thing the absolute value of a real number r is greater than or equal to r and also it is greater than or equal to minus r why is the, why are these inequalities true let's see say r is non-negative then what happens to this inequality then this inequality becomes this right that is because in that case the absolute value is equal to r itself and what about this inequality it becomes this 
Is this true? Yes, this is true because R is non-negative. So minus R is non-positive. That means when R is zero, you have equality. You have zero on both sides. But when R is positive, this is a positive real number and this is a negative real number and definitely you have strict inequality. So it is true. But what happens when R is less than zero? When R is less than zero, the first inequality becomes minus R greater than or equal to R. Is that true? Yes, it is true because see R is negative. That means minus R is positive and R is negative. Actually, we have strict inequality, but still this is also true. And what happens to this? In this case, you just have this, which in fact is true because both sides are equal. So that means for a general real number R, these two inequalities are true. That is, the absolute value is greater than or equal to the number itself and also greater than or equal to the negative of the number. So we are now going to use this fact to manipulate this inequality. Okay. So now I can erase this. So our aim is to show that x0 plus bt is greater than 0. So this is how we proceed. This implies t is greater than minus x0 divided by b since x the absolute value of x naught is greater than or equal to minus x naught that is why this is greater than or equal to this but be very careful it may not always be true. You see, what we have used here is this. We have used this inequality in uh, writing this conclusion. That is, it, this one implies this. This is greater than this. This is greater than or equal to see this. So, this is greater than this. But, where are we getting this from? We are getting this from this one. How? By dividing on both sides by b. And keep in mind b is a positive integer. That positivity is the key here. Without positivity you cannot claim that the same inequality remains, I mean the direction remains intact. Positivity of b allows us to have the same direction of the inequality. Okay, so that's how we get this. Now you can multiply on both sides by b and again because b is positive this gives us bt greater than minus x0 or x0 plus bt is greater than 0. And now similarly, we are going to show that minus of y0 minus a t is greater than 0. That means a t minus y0 is greater than 0. So we use this one. Just like b is positive, a is also a positive integer. Here, however, instead of there we considered minus x0, but here we want something else. So we are considering y0. Again, you write since this is greater than or equal to y0. 
if you want you can mention the fact that positivity of a and b uh, that fact is playing a role here but i am not writing anything for that because that is understood is greater than 0 okay so we have shown that the x and y in the proposed solution are both positive hence there exists infinitely many Uh, okay we can call it positive solution to this equation that is for any such uh, choice of t you you are getting a solution you change the t value you get another solution that that way you get infinitely many solutions but the thing is uh, why do infinitely many t's exist that are both greater than this and this that is because you see on the numbered line we don't really know where these rational numbers lie maybe it's the case that this number lies here and this number lies here but still exceeding them there are infinitely many positive integers so that's why infinitely many t's anyway exist that satisfy both these inequalities and correspondingly we get infinitely many solutions to the given diophantine equation so that's it that is the proof then the next one now it has two parts in part a we have to prove something generally prove that the diophantine equation ax plus by plus c z equal to d is solvable in the integers of course in the integers if and only if the greatest common divisor of a b and c divides the integer d so here also the criterion for solvability of this equation is just like the one for solvability of the equation involving only two variables here we have three variables so that is part a and part b is an 
um, is a numerical problem. Find all solutions in in the integers of this equation. 15x plus 12y plus 30z or 30z equal to 24 and a hint is given to this part p put y equal to 3s minus 5t and x oh, oh sorry z equal to minus s plus 2t okay so let us deal with a first Let the GCD of A, B, and C divide D. That means D is equal to some integer multiple of this GCD. Where k is an integer k belongs to the set of integers and now we recall a previous exercise and in fact something that we did in that exercise one can easily generalize generalize the exercise or the solution the exercise itself looking at the solution to this exercise that we already have done exercise 12 of the previous section this is section 2.4 the previous one is 2.3 state that the GCD of A, B and C is an integer combination of A, B and C just like the GCD of A and B is an integer combination of A and B lambda A plus mu B for some integers lambda and B the similar thing happens here say A K1 plus b k 2 plus c k 3 for some integers k 1 k 2 and k 3 how that happens and why we are able to write like this will be clear if you go and see the solution to exercise 12 from the previous section Hence, D 
which is this multiple of the gcd now becomes a times k1 k plus b times k2 k plus c times k3 k which shows us that x equal to k1 k y equal to k2 k and z equal to k3 k constitute a solution to our given diophantine equation a x plus b y plus c z equal to d that means it is solvable in the integers so if you want you can write that conclusion so now we prove the converse conversely okay i will leave this equation here okay so that uh, we can know when we start solving this part what the equation was but i will erase this part conversely let ax plus by plus cz equal to t for some integers x y and z then we have to prove that the gcd of a b and c divides d now the argument is this since so we just uh, keep this separately okay understand that this is not a part of this it has nothing to do with this solution since this by its very definition divides a b and c a b and c it also divides this thing ax plus by plus cz by elementary properties of the uh, divisibility relation but which is nothing but d so that's it we have proved that the given diophantine equation is solvable in the integers if and only if the gcd of the coefficients divides the right hand side so that is the theorem for solvability and now we come to the solution of this one so here without uh, writing anything formally let us just simplify the equation first of all so this is the given equation you can do the formal uh, writing of the solution as you like now you look at the theory in part a what does it say that this equation has a solution is solvable if and only if the gcd of fifteen, twelve, and thirty divides twenty-four, and you can clearly see that the gcd will be three. Three divides twenty-four, so that means. Uh, it will have a solution now if you actually carry out the division that is divide on both sides by 3 
then the equation gets this equivalent form now this can be manipulated a little bit uh, after rearranging terms we get this 5 times x plus 2z equal to 8 minus 4y from that if you take 4 common out you will have 2 minus y ok now this equation have a, and if you want you can write like this also because after all these are equivalent equations you can uh, start from here and get this and also you can go back so writing this is in fact actually writing just this so now this is our equation now it is in a form from which we can say something note that we already know that the equation has a solution that means there are integers x y and z for which this equation is true so that means the left hand side is an integer and the right hand side is also an integer and in particular x plus 2z is an integer and 2 minus y is also an integer so what does this tell us it tells us that in order for this equation to be true 5 should divide the right hand side because the right hand side is a multiple of 5 an integer multiple and 4 should divide the left hand side because the left hand side is a multiple of 4 but now watch this since the GCD of 5 and 4 is 1 so from I think it's Euclid's lemma right so 5 in dividing the right hand side actually has to divide 2 minus y because of this condition and that's where we are applying Euclid's lemma. Similarly because of that same condition 4 in dividing the left hand side actually has to divide x plus 2z. So x plus 2z should be a multiple of 4 and 2 minus y should be a multiple of 5. So that is something new well, that we can conclude from this equation. So what we are saying is that um, x plus 2z is a multiple of 4, 4t and 2 minus y is some multiple of 5 say 5s for some for some integers t and s ok so from these things you can immediately see that you can say something about y now itself that y should be of the form 2 minus 5 s where s is some integer right and now you see that the original equation having three variables has been reduced to two equations one of them has one variable and the other one has two variables so this is again a diophantine equation that is uh, of the type that we already have a theory for and we can solve this generally using that theory so if we do that then you will 
get a general solution to this and combine that with this expression for y you will get a general solution to the entire equation now if you go through the process of actually writing down the general solution to this then you get this oh but before that something else can also be concluded now if you put these things back here say you put 2 minus y equal to 5s what do you get 20s on the right side x plus 2z equal to 4t you get 20t on the left side that means t has to actually be equal to x s in fact the equation that is this equation 5 times x plus 2 z equal to 4 times 2 minus y shows that T should be equal to S. Now the general solution to the equation x plus 2z or 2z equal to 40 is is just this x equal to two t plus two k and z equal to t minus k where k is an arbitrary integer and y is already 2 minus 5 s and hence 2 minus 5 t because s is equal to t. So the general solution to I think I need a bit, bit of ink, right? to the given equation is x equal to this y of course comes from here 2 minus 5 t and z or z equals t minus k where t and k belong to the set of integers now of course it uh, is not a standard procedure i mean you see we have a theorem that tells us that the general solution to say this diophantine equation there is a formula that gives us those x and y values x naught plus uh, b divided by d times t that that thing 
but this is a three variable Diophantine equation. How are we so sure that we have a general solution? I mean, how can we make sure that all the solutions are here? That is because you see, the way we started the started with the equation, there we assumed that there are some integers x, y, and z for which that equation is satisfied. So there is a solution. And then we worked like this and we figured out that the solutions must have that solution that is that set of x, y, and z values. There the x, y, and z must have this form. Okay. So if x, y, and z form is set which is a solution to the original Diophantine equation then x, y and z must have these forms. So that means you are actually looking at all the solutions. It is a consequence of the fact that some set of numbers x, y and z forms a solution that the form of those numbers should be this. There is nothing, I mean, uh, this has to be the case. But if you want, you can see whether all such numbers form solutions. That, however, can, uh, I mean, you can end the solution or the solution to the problem here itself. But just for the sake of seeing whether really these expressions solve the given Diophantine equation, regardless of the values of t and k like uh, that's what we are claiming here now no matter what the integers t and k are these values give us a solution let's see if that is true so our original equation was what 15 x plus where is it 15x plus 12y plus 30z equal to 20 and in fact the we need not uh, work with this one we already saw that this is equivalent to 5x plus 4y plus 10z equal to a. So let us calculate 5x plus 4y plus 10z for this expression. 5 times x is 2t plus 2k plus 4 times 2 minus 5t plus 10 times t minus k. And what does it give us? 10, uh, okay, let me write the things instead of doing it orderly. 10t plus 10k plus 8 minus 20t. plus 10t minus 10k so 10t plus 10t minus 20t they give us 0 10k minus 10k give us 0 so we are left with 8 Yes, any such set of x, y and z values for any arbitrary integers t and k actually give, uh, constitutes a solution. So that is it, you have all the solutions here itself. So this is how a Diophantine equation having three variables can also be solved. And this is what we did in that um, 
solution that I was exercise that I mentioned there in the solution exercise 12 from the previous section so you go back to that also and see what we did there and let me just end the video here itself there are some other exercises also in this exercise set so we will deal with them in the next number theory update and the next upload is this coming Friday and on Friday we are going back to graph theory where we um, we, we uh, saw one uh, theorem with that bonds and those things. No? We are uh, seeing how some notions from linear algebra can be used to understand these cycle spaces, cut spaces, those things. So we will see them on Friday. So that's just it. I'm signing up for tonight. So until Friday, this is me, Lucifer from a mathematical room. Have a nice night.